Richard Morgan Flay, whose birth name is speculated to be Fred Phillips, and Fred Demary, or Stewart, was born on 25th February 1949 to his biological parents, Luther and Ollie Phillips, but adopted by Dr. Richard Reid Flay and Kathleen Kingsmiller Flay. Still, Richard is popularly known as Rick Flair. Flair attended the Wayland Academy in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, and was a member of the interscholastic wrestling track and football team. He then briefly attended the University of Minnesota before venturing into a life career. Flair pursued his wrestling career after school. In 1971, he trained as a professional wrestler with Van Gen. In 1972, he debuted his career, battling judge Scrap Iron Gadaski to a draw. At the same time, he wrestled under American Wrestling Association, AWA, and matched with Dusty Rhodes, Andre the Giant, Larry Hennig, Chris Taylor, and Wahoo McDaniel. In 1973, Flair competed for the International Wrestling Enterprise in Japan, leaving AWA and signing to Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling, MACW. His stores in Japan began fully in 1974 for the All Japan Pro Wrestling. After winning a few matches and losing out some, Flair joined the NWA from 1977 to 1980. He held five reigns as the NWA United States Heavyweight Champion, defeating Dusty Rhodes to win his very first championship. But he became an elite in wrestling when he referred to himself as the Nature Boy just to indicate a feud with the original Nature Boy, Buddy Rogers. The feud led to a match in which Rogers defeated Flair in one encounter. Flair, however, established himself as the leading franchise of promotion for NWA when there was high competition from Vince's WWF. Flair feuded and wrestled Sting in 1988 at the first ever Clash of the Champions, which resulted in a 45 minutes draw. However, at the Cheetah Rumble match, Ricky Steamboat pinned Flair and won the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. This prompted a series of matches between the two, at which Flair always wrestled to regain the title. Finally, in 1989 Wrestle War, Flair regained the title from Steamboat. The match was voted as the match of the year. This win gave him recognition by WCW as the first WCW World Heavyweight Champion and was also recognized by NWA as its World Heavyweight Champion. At a match in 1991, however, Tatsumi Fujinami defeated Flair at WCW New Japan Super Show to win the title. Though Fujinami was recognized as the winner of NWA, WCW did not recognize him as a champion, stating that he went against WCW rules. Flair wrestled Fujinami again at Super Brawl and reclaimed the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. By mid-1991, Flair signed with the World Wrestling Federation WWF and started appearing on television under the name The Real World Champion. WCW sued him for the championship belt, but Flair declined to release it. He claimed that the title belt belonged to him in place of the deposit of $25,000 owed him by WCW after he was fired from WCW. Flair continued winning his matches and in 1992, he won the Royal Rumble match to claim the WWF Championship, after which he left WWF and was resigned to WCW. However, he could not wrestle due to a no-compete clause in his contract, so he settled for hosting a short live talk show called A Flair for the Gold. Flair wrestled Barry Windham and won the match to retain the NWA World Heavyweight Championship for a teenth time before WCW departed the NWA in 1993. Flair wrestled Sting again in June 1994 at the Clash of the Champions unification match that merged WCW World Heavyweight Championship with WCW International World Heavyweight Championship. Flair defeated Sting and solidified his heel turn. Flair who was now the undisputed and unified WCW champion, feuded with Hulk Hogan upon Hulk Hogan's signing with WCW in June 1994. He won the match but lost in a July rematch to Hogan at Bash at the Beach. After his defeat, he took a few months break. Flair briefly returned as a part-time manager for Vader in 1995 and also a wrestler before going on another long hiatus after being defeated. After an eight-month break, Flair returned in 2001 to the WWF on a new screen role as co-owner, after Shane and Stephanie McMahon sold their stock to him. 
This led to a feud between Flair and Vince, which resulted in a match at the 2002 Royal Rumble Street Fight where Flair defeated McMahon. Flair lost the international championship to Shelton Benjamin at an episode of Raw ending his 155 days reign as champion. After his defeat, he took a long time off around 2006 to rest and only returned briefly to defeat Mick Foley at Vengeance and again at SummerSlam. Flair returned to WWE programming on Raw to announce that he was never going to retire. In retaliation, Vince announced that the next match Flair would lose would be his first retirement match. Due to this, Flair wrestled and won several matches that threatened his career against opponents like William Regal, Vince Mahon, Triple H, Umaga, and Mr. Kennedy. He then signed with Ring of Honor and served as the company's ambassador in an on-screen role and also appeared on the television show Ring of Honor Wrestling. After waiting on WWE for six months to sign him, he decided to sign with TNA Wrestling. On 17 January at Genesis, he helped Styles cheat on his match to pin and retain the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Flair continued his appearances with TNA until April 2012 when he tried to get his contract with TNA terminated, which led to TNA suing WWE for tampering with their contract. Flair, who had been inactive due to an injury, was fired from TNA and later announced that he would never wrestle again. However, he returned at WrestleMania 35 to help Triple H defeat Batista, who had earlier assaulted Flair in February 2019 after Flair refused to come out of the ring when WWE celebrated his 70th birthday. Flair was honored by Minneapolis, Minnesota, Virginia, Colleston, South Carolina, and Columbia mayors, who all set aside specific dates as Ric Flair Day. He was also given the keys to Columbia City and Greensboro, North Carolina to commemorate his victory of the steel cage match against Harley Race at the inaugural Starcade event. Flair became the first inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2008, becoming the first person to be inducted while still in active wrestling. He was also inducted into the NWA Hall of Fame in Atlanta, Georgia in 2012. He became the first person to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame twice when he was inducted under the group The Four Horsemen. Flair was named the greatest NWA World Heavyweight Champion of all time in 1998 by a group of professional wrestling experts and by John Molinaro in his 2002 book The Top 100 Wrestlers of All Time. After the ring, Flair appeared in television shows including 1996 Baywatch and voiced himself in animated series Uncle Grandpa and the Cleveland Show in 2011. Flair has been married five times, first to Leslie Goodman on August 28, 1971, having two children with her before they divorced in 1983. That same year, he married Elizabeth Harrell and had two children with her, divorcing her in 2006. And on May 27, 2006, he married Tiffany Van Damark, who filed for divorce in 2009. Flair then married Jacqueline Beams in the same year of his third divorce. Again, he and Beams divorced in 2014. Finally, Flair married his fifth wife, Wendy Barlow, known as Fifi, in the maid of WCW in 2018. Flair whose net worth is $3 million, has a career that has spanned four decades and has been officially recognized as the 16-time WWE World Champion. However, he claims to be a 21-time champion. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. We love you.